Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And um, this is my second last sketching trip in Montreal in late November 2022. And I'm around the neighborhood of St. Henry. It's a perfect sunny day and I love all the dancing light and shadows. Here I am outside Cafe St. Henry. As always, I sketched my cup of latte first before attempting an interior or urban sketch above. So here I am, I got a new spot beside the window and I'm ready to sketch the glorious view, the golden sunshine on the street. So I'm beginning with this corner building on the left, right outside in the foreground area, just a simple geometric contour outline. When I'm drawing this outline, I'm very aware of that this building is roughly a um, geometric shape of a rectangular prism. So when I'm drawing something seemingly simple, there are actually more complicated thinking processes going on in my head. And now I just drew these squares of the, uh, the sign of the pub. Yeah, this is very old fashioned. Adding a bit of accentuation around the lower right bottom of these little square signs. Each sign had a letter in there. And by the way, this is my actual drawing speed in real life. And then the painting process is going to be in real life speed as well. I just want to give you a really realistic sense of how fast I'm sketching in a real life situation when I'm on my own and not teaching. So when I'm teaching, I'm actually, uh, it, it takes me a double amount or tr even triple the amount of time to sketch something and teach at the same time. So yeah, now just drawing these windows following the very basic rule of perspective. The right side of this corner building is like slanting down towards the right. And the front that I'm drawing right now, the shapes are pretty straightforward. There's actually a stop sign here and was an arrow sign above it. Yeah, so the window frame on the front side is pretty straightforward. And these two windows are actually slanting down towards the right. So basically for this corner building, we could see two sides of it, of this rectangular prism or the box shape. Yeah, so now I'm drawing this vague line to, the, to divide the two sides. So I think pretty much all the time when we're standing on the ground level and looking at the building on the other side of the street from ground level, we could only see two sides of that box shape or the rectangular prism, the two sides of it. Okay, so as you can see now is pretty clearly defined. And then adding some more loose horizontal and quick short vertical lines to define the brick texture on the exterior to give this building more identity. That is not a smooth surface. And when we're drawing the inner details, um, in my sketching philosophy, I don't like to draw in a very tight way. I just, just kind of summarize the texture and not copying every single row of bricks. That's too much seeing, too much pressure and too much work. Just relax and be loose. And yeah, just adding some final details for this corner building. And then this pole here, you know, supporting these square signs and make it solid black. And it's starting to draw the curb. And connecting another thing beside it. This is actually the top of the buildings on the other side of the street. So these are actually rectangular prisms or box shapes as well. And we could see two sides of each piece. And the rule of perspective is pretty straightforward. You don't have to know where those vanishing points are. So now I am uh, making these four shortened windows all going upwards towards the right. This is my seeing and it's not 100% uh, following the rule of perspective. 
But I do know that all of these windows, they are above my eye level and they're all kind of flying upwards towards the right. And all of these shapes are pretty loosely drawn because I'm, I'm not pushing myself to be perfect. And I see someone walking across the street, just quickly drawing her. And she had um, like a shopping bag on both hands, wearing a backpack. And now sort of drawing her from my memory. And probably I have to wait for another a person to pass by and finish the legs. A lot of times I have to use someone else's lower body to finish that drawing of a person. It's not the same person always. And um, now I'm just drawing the car in a really playful way, parked on the other side of the street, on the bottom of those buildings. And um, those display windows, very thin rectangles, foreshortened. And now here's another person crossing the street, just finish those lakes. And the boots or shoes, a really funny gesture. And um, yeah, when we're drawing people, we don't have to be you know, perfect with you know, human anatomy. Just relax and try your best and use a lot of loose lines to uh, capture the movement of that person. Okay, here's another lady wearing a purse. And um, her legs are like crossing this way, her boots. And so when I'm drawing people walking across the street in an urban sketch, I try to make every person's gesture different from one another. And adding some accentuation for this person's neck and the backpack area to add a bit of accentuation so uh, he's, he can stand up better. Now we, moving on to this middle building on the other side of the street, in front of it, there is a street lamp. So when doing an urban sketch, I try my best to draw the things in the foreground or one thing that's on top of another first. Yeah, there's another uh, street sign there in the middle ground covering part of that building. And then starting to draw these chunks of display windows on the first floor of this middle building. The bottom line of these buildings are going downwards towards the right because these lines are below my eye level. But these windows are above my eye level. They're going upwards towards the right. So there's a change of direction above and below the eye level. Yeah, these windows are still going upwards. And I'm also using black ink for the window panels, just so there's a sense of depth for these buildings. There's a space behind these windows. There's graffiti there. Yeah, so once you know the rules of perspective that you know where these windows should be going, your lines could be loose. You, you, they don't have to be so strict. And um, the shapes could be quite different. And these windows are actually getting larger and larger, getting closer to you on the right. Yeah, so there's actually a shift of width for these windows as well. And I wanna add another person walking across the street. And this man is looking shorter because he's actually in the middle ground, a little further away from the lady in the foreground in the middle. And yeah, it's nice to have this trio here of three people just trying to finish uh, these buildings in the middle floor of this pharmacy building. Uh, the name of this pharmacy is John Kotu. It's a chain pharmacy store um, in Montreal. Almost everywhere, in almost every neighborhood. John Kotu. And then adding some more accentuations for these windows. Yeah, moving on to the ground level. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm trying to make uh, the bottom line of this building. But before that, I want to add this car first. 
And yeah, this line going downwards towards the right. Starting to add some more signs of this pharmacy and tiny people on the other side of the street because of distance. And adding these vertical and then more long lines going down towards the right because this first floor is actually below my eye level. Yeah, so the bottom line of these windows are actually going down towards the right, not upwards anymore. Yeah. And then using very quick vertical hatching lines to suggest shade around that entrance area. Okay, it just added one chimney in the, in the back of that building and then adding some important lines that define the perspective the corner of the curb, very important line. Yeah, that gives a uh, immediate three dimension to this uh, sketch and the, uh, the crosswalk pieces, these stripes. Yeah, they don't have to look perfect, but they're guiding the viewer into this sketch very effectively. And you see, yeah, another line, yeah, for the curb on the other side of the street that helps with the sense of perspective. Final little lines here and there. There's another uh, graffiti there. Okay, moving on to the last few seconds of the drawing process. Slowing down and see if there's any important details to add. Yeah, just want to add yeah, another frame for the uh, display window there. That's it. Ooh, one last bit of accentuation there. And drawing a circle to put the day and the date in. It's a Saturday. November the 26th. That's it for the drawing work. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors. I'm beginning with my Holbein brand large tip water brush, squeezing it to wet the sky area first. And I'm using my etcher watercolors. And also I'm wetting the street and the building areas with water because I want a really loose wet into wet blooming effect. Putting on this golden tone of uh, medium yellow or canthum yellow. This is the golden hour of sunset. And I had to paint really fast before this color faded away. Adding a bit of orange there. Beautiful uh, warm colors right now. So um, in my other YouTube videos, I always mention that it's always a good idea to start painting the lightest tone. Um, so yellow in the uh, black and white spectrum is on the, uh, the lightest end of the uh, gray scale. And after yellow is the orange, red, and yellow green, medium green, and um, lighter green, and then the blues and violets. Okay, yeah. And when I'm painting something, most of the time I work from intuition. Now I feel like painting the sky just to create a really sharp contrast with the, uh, the yellow below. Blue and yellow, they are complementary colors on the color wheel. And when I'm painting sky, I don't stress on you know, painting it perfectly flat because the sky is never flat. The air is always turbulating. The sky is actually always in movement. And because the color of the sunset is like glaring, and I could see the uh, the bottom of the sky is of, of a bright golden yellow too. So I'm just punching on a bit of uh, medium yellow and uh, letting it merge freely with the color of the sky. Yeah. So the the middle to the bottom of the sky is glowing with the color of the sun as well. And punching on a bit of um, orange. The color is really vibrant. And it only lasts for like a few minutes and then it's starting to fade away. So this period is very short lived. So I'm actually observing and painting pretty quickly. My movement is not that quick, but I'm going to get it done in a few more minutes. And now putting on a bit of um, orange brown. And also the uh, the orange reds, 
then mixing orange with medium red and a bit of a burnt sienna. Yeah, so this is the color of this building here. And just, you know, just putting this color on with some traces of brush marks. I like, you know, keeping my brush marks a bit because um, it adds a sense of um, movement. Yeah, just putting this on and a, a bit of the yellow from the previous layer is showing through this red orange. And this brown is slightly diluted over here. So I am trying to mix different kinds of um, red browns, orange browns, and also controlling the amount of water each time. More muted colors around the bottom of this building. Yeah, and now I'm gradually adding the shadows using the leftover blues from my palette. This is kind of like a cobalt blue putting it on top of the yellow when the yellow is dried. So that blue is not turning into a um, way of a green color. And also mix in a bit of uh, violet for this patch of shadow here. So when I'm looking at the, uh, the colors of the shadows, um, I see different kinds of grays. Some grays could be more of a bluish gray or a purplish gray. Yeah, so it really depends on the color of that building being projected onto, onto the ground. The color of the shadow could be slightly different. You just have to look very deeply to feel it. And punching on some more vibrant orange. The color of the sunset reflecting onto these glassy surfaces of the display windows and grabbing a bit of red for these letters of the pharmacy. Some more reflective colors for the window panels. Just using very quick and choppy brush strokes. I don't like to stir so much with my brush. I just punch the colors on and let them go. Right, and keep grabbing some more blues on to put on top of the yellows for shaded areas and shadows. So when painting like sunshine, it's very important to add on these muted shadow colors and not just those bright yellows and oranges. And this is, this is a really important way to create contrast and don't be afraid of, you know, making the painting looking messy. It's supposed to have these patches of shadows and shaded areas. And now I'm just grabbing a bit of red to paint these little square signs and the stop sign. Grabbing a bit of leftover brown, burnt sienna mixed with a bit of yellow ochre, diluted. Certain areas are more or less diluted. So when I'm using the paint, I'm being very flexible with the amount of water. Okay, second layer wet into wet, raw umber mixed with burnt sienna for the reliefs of the, t of the bricks. Because this corner building is a building that's the closest to me, it deserves more details and definitions to bring it forward. So it's just using little choppy brush strokes to create the, the illusion of bricks popping out from the surface and using some more leftover dark browns, like a raw umber or sepia color for the bottom of this building. And also the blues. Yeah, so right now the overall sketch is very much done. For in the last two minutes, I'm just going to add some final polish here and there. A bit more shadows. And also to paint the outfits of those people. Some more bits of grays. Really taking my time to, uh, to finish it. Because in most of my videos, is, um, it's a time lapse of my sketching process. It seems like I'm painting 
I'm drawing a painting pretty fast. So that actually is a slow process, as you see right now. And just using the level of rounds to paint these people's hair. And I sort of remember she was wearing like a brown jacket with a blue for the shade. So her body looks kind of three dimensional and not a flat shape. To paint the jeans, I use the uh, cobalt blue. And because these people are kind of walking towards the light, the back are actually very much like silhouettes. So a lot of intense colors of grays. So when painting a landscape or a cityscape on a sunny day, it's so important to know where, where the, the light source comes from, where the sunshine comes from. And so we know the shade sides are on the opposite side of the sun. All right, so yeah, just final bits of greens here and there just to make this painting slightly more interesting with a different color, green. All right, so this is very much it. So right after I finished my uh, last couple of brush strokes, the lighting condition is gone. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I try to update my channel two to three times a week. And I'll see you very soon next time, everyone. Have a great day.